You know, we're talking about love here, but yes. not between parents. We're talking about mm. love, right? Mm. So relationships. Well, according to oh, Comet, buddy. which is this financial <laughs> services company, they surveyed 364 single yep. employed millennials. We 364 love 364 single employed millennials, okay? okay. They didn't call you're me You're single, they you're employed, yeah. and you're a millennial. So that, that they, is me. 364 of Adiyans, <laughs> okay? And they said... Would you prefer or what is priority, okay. love mm -hmm. or money? Mm. Okay. Okay, so we're asking you that. Okay, we'll ask you. Well, no, let, let's, let's show the results and okay, then we'll ask okay, you. Okay. So 41% of these millennials said that, said that they would end a relationship for a better job. Oh, okay. okay. Job I you want me to comment over now? relationship. I can no, no, see no, that. No, okay, okay. 33%, okay, okay, so less than that 41, said that they would end a relationship for a raise of $36,000. Oh, so that's a big ask amount. yourself, is that enough to, for you to end a relationship? Okay. 86% right. of these mm -hmm. millennials, hmm. were not so bad, said that we would move for a relationship. So putting love okay. first, if that meant that the partner was getting a better job with more cheddar. It's so all about the, end, the money. In the end, yes. it, it can be love and money. Why not both, mm. right? But for you, is love more important right now or money? Mm. True. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is a loaded <laughs> like question. Some generations ago, love. You can, love is, you can't I'm put a not, price tag I'm on love. I'm not of that generation. Okay. So that's I the point. I am all about the career, currently all about the money, but $36,000 is not enough to get me to sway one way or the other. But You're like an additional, right. is, that, that's, is that an additional and a 36? Raise, a raise. Yes. But that has to be a percentage a of what you're already making. Sure. If that is in a great percentage of what you're already making, it's not going to sway you to go one way or the other. And if you're in a great relationship and that person didn't want to move for you for that job because maybe yeah. he had a really great job, but $36,000 more was on the table, you're saying that that wouldn't be enough if this was a great relationship. That wouldn't be enough for you to move. So, Megan, tell us. We're going to have to really go into <laughs> my dating history here. Oh, my but favorite do topic. It. Here's the thing. There hasn't been someone in my life that I would have been willing uh, to move for any amount of money for. Uh, Let's check that box off. Okay, check. And so it's just not a priority for me. Okay, no, I get right it. Right now. I get it. But I feel like maybe you catch me around 38, 39. It's like, I need that love because I need Then maybe me. I want to get <laughs> right. some love, but I'm okay right. right now. Okay, so I'm asking all of the millennials or the parents of millennials to please chime in in the comment section. Are we getting anyone oh, to chime my in? Oh, we're getting, we're already getting a bunch. Okay. okay, I don't feel that I agree with you here. As kids, he says, choose love. The money will come with happiness and inner peace. I'm sorry, Reggie Cepeda. <laughs> but the number one cause of divorce in this country, is maybe the world, I don't know, but it is financial issues. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have your finances straight, and if you don't know yourself well enough, there's no way you're gonna be able and to make any it. relationship work to get to a place of love. Okay, Okay. So, any, more, any more comments? Yes, um, ma'am. This other woman named Jessica is weighing in, and I will agree with you, Jessica, because this study is focusing just on single millennials. So single what if, employed millennials. Yeah, yeah. single employed. So if you want to get the other side of the spectrum, you have to interview employed, mm -hmm. married millennials just right. to see what they all say about that because they're actually in the relationship with love and right. dealing with the money. So, oh, I just missed that the would, comment. Where did it go? That would be us. I just missed the that comment. That would be you guys. We're employed. We're married. I just saw your comment. I can't find it now. Oh, great. My goodness. <laughs> The, Jessica Downey, she said, well, of course it. they only ask single people. That's not a fair group generalization. That's not a that, representation that is, of all millennials. It is a representa representation of them. So we're just right. focusing on this. And again, this is a financial services company called Comet, surveying these single employed millennials, I'm sure, because there are these big businesses, there are these big agencies that are trying to tap into the brain of a single employed millennial and yes. say, okay, what is it that they're interested in? If they're going to come to Sacramento, yes. are they going to be more interested in maybe places that they can meet people and find love? Or do they want those high-end jobs, maybe in the tech industry? Like, like what the is Bay Area more? or so, Austin. Yes, if you're thinking of city-wise, I'm hmm. thinking of a tech company like financial services company to go, right. okay, so they, they do these sort of tests. Yes. They do these for these specific reasons because there are obviously people out there who want to tap in once again. So mm -hmm. it's learning our generation a bit more. But I will say when Baker, Baker Machado, yeah. he's a Cheddar anchor. Mm -hmm. And if you're not familiar with Cheddar, it's the show that we dip into and we I talk live. And it's just all focused on tech stories. Mm -hmm. And so they're out in New York City. They're on the New York Stock Exchange every morning. So at 5 and 6, we do a live hit with them. So Baker asked me the question, talking about millennials, us, 
do you think millennials prefer love or think priority over love or money? And I said, uh, probably money, because that's just sort of the perception, right? Yes. So, Tony Gordon says that millennials only care about themselves. They're <laughs> selfish. I would be scared to have babies now. I have six kids, three granddaughters, and help over 850 at-risk children all year long. Mm -hmm. My wife and I are getting ready to celebrate 20 years of beautiful marriage. This is a paragraph I chose a long Well, that's a wonderful story, and that's great. It's a different generation, too, and I respect your generation, and I think to call our generation Mm -hmm. selfish sometimes can be a bit selfish, right? Because you're not you're not understanding the what generation, to... what we were born into. Yes. Mm-hmm. We were raised by a generation that didn't know social media in, in school and in young adult life. And so we're just adapting the best way that we know how. Absolutely. Or are we practicing self-care and self-preserving and self-enrichment by yeah. learning who we are yeah. well enough to know that when we get into a relationship, we don't expect that person to do certain things that they wouldn't have done otherwise as a single individual. We just know going into that relationship, we are a whole person adding to another whole person. Which I, is I why we're having kids later in exactly. life. You can call that selfish, or I think it's okay when it comes to you and you're not, you don't have kids and you don't have a husband mm-hmm. to think about yourself and what kind of human being you're, you're, you're being in this society. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that is called selfish. It's self-awareness. I but think it's self-sustaining. Yeah, well, I, honestly, let's blame the parents in a good way, okay? Oh. So you have your parents who are like, go to college, get a job, be right. self-sustaining. Yes, get married, yes. fall in love, do whatever you want. But you need to be able to make sure to take care of yourself. Yes. So mm-hmm. is it our parents' fault? I don't know. But I think I they will... instilled in us the right values to be yes. able to understand what we need yes. as first. an individual first. first. And respect that and then move forward with our lives accordingly. But now that we're adults, it's tough for that generation to now understand and try to attach themselves because this generation wanted, they had kids young. Mm -hmm. They expected to be grandparents a little bit younger. So when we're not delivering on these certain fronts, it's like, wait, but I wanted you to be young and independent and make Mm -hmm. this money and go to school. But why aren't you in love and (laughs) and why aren't you having kids and why aren't you taking better care of yourself? It's it's all about social media. It's like... You can't have the cake and eat it too. Mm-hmm. In in some case, we're doing our best as a woman who's young, mar- been married for two years. I'm following my dreams. I have mm-hmm. yes. my dream job. job. Yeah, I'm having kids a little bit later on in my life, but that is still priority. It's just right. it's not the 21, 19, 20, 21 year old yeah, self right out having of college. a kid like like mom was. Right. You know, it'll be maybe 29, 30. Can, I so, go, can we talk about this Fortune article? I, sure. I think we talked about it maybe briefly on Extra Shot, but mm-hmm. I know it was a news story. This was Morning back, Blend. Uh, Morning oh, Blend, probably. Okay. And it said something like, one in six millennials have $100,000 in savings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Which is yes, fun. they want money, but what are they going to do with this money? Are they trying to prioritize experiences, mm. or are they trying to save this money to... Build get a, a house. house, get a house, put a down payment on. So, again, mm-hmm. yeah, that's another thing. Are they saving it, or are they just trying to use it in another way? I think, just mm-hmm. go for it. no, go. I can speak to a group of my friends. We've yes. all chosen incredibly diverse work paths, mm-hmm. but I have one friend who, after going to Wake Forest for undergrad, went to Harvard for law school, and she was working at a top law agency in, or law firm in D.C. and decided to quit that job to travel the world for a year. So she left that big salary. She left the fancy job to have that experience. And now coming back into the workplace, she values things differently. So she appreciates her time, her life experience more than she did putting in those hard hours at the office. So to the love and money or love experiences money conversation, I think, speaking from that one experience, that you're choosing an experience that you love where you can possibly make money even if it's not as much money as you would have made in a corporate job. Got it. If that's what you wanted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that fulfills millennials, at least the ones in my life, more so than working that nine to five corporate job yeah. where you're not feeling creatively enriched and when you're not able to fill your cup up as much as you'd yeah. want to. I think this generation too, we've been instilled of being when it comes to independence, mm-hmm. that it doesn't make much sense when you enter the workforce and you're having to respond to a boss or you're having to mm-hmm. work under someone and it becomes this mindset of why why can't I just be my own boss so entrepreneurship has become such a big deal yes and being your own boss and being able to make your own money and then how much money can you make mm-hmm. and it's become very competitive 
uh, in our own circle of that people. That makes sense, yeah. You know, that everyone kind of wants to start their own thing, which, again, social media, it always becomes part of this conversation because okay. it has been implemented into our lives at a very early age where we see these people who are making a ton of money just mm -hmm. because of the following they have on social media. So it, I know a lot of my young cousins, you know, they have this idea that, like, oh, I can do something on Instagram and, like, oh, start my own business oh, because yes. of the show Shark Tank on ABC. Like, young people are into that to go, mm -hmm. oh, I have this small idea that mm -hmm. would just make everyday life better for so many people. So simple. I can get a patent on that, and I can make billions of dollars yes. and then travel the world. I will say that the millennial generation, they are definitely risk takers. And it's really great because they are using their creative yeah. geniuses to come up with these great ideas, becoming entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. But let's go back, like, maybe to the 1950s, 1960s, okay. where your boss wanted you to stay in one spot and they wanted to make sure that you had a family because they didn't want you to go to the competitor yep. right across the street or in one, another city. So it definitely is a generational thing Absolutely. for sure. Mm -hmm. But I will say that our parents have been wonderful to give us this wonderful um, life experience to do what you want to do because you yes. can do it. No one's going to stop you. The only person stopping you is yourself. Yes. Pete so, Mendeering is I saying... I saw that, yes. Choose wisely Absolutely. when it comes to money or love. Choose wisely because when you're 60 and alone, the money will mean very little. Yes. And I respect that. Yes. Oh, and Trish. cameraman Sweet Pete, were you nodding? Yes? No? Yes. yes. Trisha, Sta <laughs> Trisha Staybrook says, I'm the mom of a 29-year-old woman with a career and close to her master's degree. Okay. At that age, I was pregnant with her, my fourth and final child. I see good in both situations. Interesting. Good Good for you, Mom. She's a hard worker. She's a hard worker. You I raised a good girl. Look at her getting her master's, has a career. But see the yeah, one generation, the difference? It's you, she, you were pregnant with her, and that was your fourth child. But it's great that you can say, I see the good in both situations. As Josh long as it's not also, that added pressure, because I think that's then what starts breaking apart that relationship between both mm -hmm. generations, not understanding each other. Okay, Josh is also a millennial. Okay. He's uh -huh. weighing in. He says, strive to be the boss. Living the ranks is good. It teaches discipline. And here I am, a millennial, and hard work pays yes, off. Yes, HWPO, baby. <laughs> hard, hard work, work pays, pays off. <laughs> off. Uh, let's see. I Kimberly love... Morgan. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Lost it? Yeah. They, they, they go by very quickly. <laughs> People go... are commenting a lot. Oh, okay. Kimberly Morgan said this. I get a tad mad at that millennials, that millennials are selfish comment because depending on what studies you see mm -hmm. I'm clumped into the millennial generation and now I'm far from being selfish Kimberly you're also like Rob you're that stuck generation yes. you're the Oregon Trail generation so you don't have to claim hey, millennials I'm Trail generation too. you don't have to claim it if you don't want <laughs> it because I understand people get like offended by this millennial they thing. do they I just do. think it's a bit we're a bit misunderstood Sometimes. Jessica Downey says that millennials are a product of a time when America wasn't doing mm. so great. Therefore, they were raised on top ramen and rice and noodles. So they might have a value for money more. I don't know about that, Jessica. No, but that's interesting. It's, it's that whole skipping of generation thing. Mm -hmm. I remember when I went to this conference, it was a women's conference, and Cookie Lee, yes, producer Billy. <laughs> Oh, I just want to soak this in, please. Oh, you're uh, soaking it in? Are we showing producer Bill? How do you feel about the millennials? Love I money. I, I'm, I'm fascinated by oh, this Oh, he doesn't take. have you a are? microphone. He doesn't have a mic. I'm Come completely up. fascinated by this take. I couldn't disagree more. Oh, with us? Yes. Okay, well, tell us your I opinion. I think you have a golden ladle pouring golden soup in uh, your mouth. All the juices. Bowl. There it is. Uh, I think that we have the opportunity to be our best selves. Don't you think that that's a good opportunity? I think everybody's had that opportunity, at least in the last 235 years. What makes you come to that conclusion? What makes you come to that conclusion that we have this golden, whatever your analogy you use? Because it's easier to get to everything you need. It's easier to find access to food. Now, mind okay. you, we're more food secure. We're politically more stable, even with our current president. And we are absolutely more opportunities, both in and out of education. For everybody from 15 to 30. But wouldn't you say, though, that at least if we're just taking the education slice of the pie, mm. that that education is now more costly and we're put in a time where the price of the job that we're getting or the, the check that we're bringing home isn't enough to then get that education that we might need? I'm terribly sorry you have to work your way up the ladder. Yes, this is true. No, or it's we a, create our own opportunities. That's what we would were you speaking call to, where selfish? you can be your own boss. No. I would say that uh, much like everybody at a certain age, it's a short-sighted view of how the world how the world works. It's interesting, though, because most millennials are in debt right now. 
which means that, yes, we're getting our education. We're trying to get into the workforce. We want to lead this life, life that our parents have tried to get us to live, but we can't afford it. And most Generation X people are still in college debt. They're just in less college debt because they've been paying on it longer. So then what do we do? Well, it's a sliding scale. I, I would suggest, for example, Governor Jerry Brown introduces the first year of college for free. Wait, he already did that. That was not around. I uh, think maybe Pell Grant and Cal Grant. Fund. Oh, wait, wait, we already have there. that. Yes. Um, more scholarship programs available at the touch of the thing. Oh, scholarships.net. Which oh, is lovely. But are the scholarships going to help those that don't have access? They're going to help more people. If they can get to a library okay. and know how to use a computer, mm -hmm. they're going to have more access than I had when I was going through this more than 20 years ago. But the percentage of people applying to college and getting into college is definitely up. From when you went to when we graduated a couple years ago. There's also more colleges than when I went to college. But there's also a problem with getting the funding that they need to allow the class sizes to be reduced enough to get that same experience that you might have had for us but to have. But don't forget generationally, going to college was secondary. Go, going to war, going to be in the army or military for that matter was probably more important than getting a college education. Mm. I'm just mainly speaking of Mad Men because that's all I can refer to. And, and my dad because he went to, he was in the Navy for a wonderful 20 years and okay. now he finally has an, a degree after the fact. So I, I, think, I think what we're all trying to understand is Yes, millennial, I, when you hear the word millennial, you're just like, oh, <coughs> great, millennial, social media, selfish. No, they. I think they're trying to live their best life to, to show everyone that, hey, I'm having a great time. But mm -hmm. you know what? You're right. I, I, I am in debt. I don't have the perfect job, but I'm going to pretend. I'm going to pretend on social media. I mean, that's what social media is all about. You're See. showing your best, best self. I think out there. I so definitely get that. Addressing the graphic on the lower third. Okay. There it says, uh, millennials want money over love. And millennials do have a more casual relationship with relationships than the generations before. Mm. That's true. It was all about So that would make ship. sense that yes. they're more disposable to them and that their approach is different than it was for 20 and 40 and 60 years ago. I don't disagree with that. There's definitely a movement towards more casual dating and what that means, especially with dating apps like Tinder and Bumble. But I think people and want to find idea who they that you want, can just get to the person yeah. you the, want to the, see. The sheer terror of even being able to text somebody when they're away uh -huh. was nerve-wracking enough okay <laughs> now somebody can evaluate me physically before i've even met them and throw me away or swipe it's one harsh way or the other. yeah so so do you envy that because that's the I, that's, I, the, that's not, the only world we know wrong, but that's but, the only world we know just like we don't know your world you don't know our world in okay, that way so then take your device set it down why would i do that? that way why would i do that why would that's it? our generation. If, that's if you don't know your social media, if you don't know your technology, you're behind in this generation because eventually we're going to be the ones that are the future and this generation. And that's okay. That's every generation. Every generation takes mm -hmm. over and it's just learning and appreciating. I love your generation. I think what you guys did in your generation, what you guys were able to do and to produce, set us up to have the lives that we have. Right. Just like my ancestors who came over from Mexico five generations ago, I don't envy their life. We have I don't envy their them. life, both, but yes. they've been able to... Cr right. I saw a sweatshirt the other day and okay. it said, I'm my ancestor's wildest dreams. Yeah, I saw that too. Because it's true. Mm -hmm. you, you're just very different and you're just trying to live your best life according to the way in which they helped launch it for you. Oh, and, and, and mind you, I just, exactly. want you to, I just feel a disrespect for our generation. Like you were disgusted with our generation and, and, and your we daughters. We felt that way from the baby boomers and the, the baby boomers went and, it is. and, and hosted concerts in mud puddles in the 60s. So you're saying that it's, cyclical. About, it's, it's cyclical. It's always going to happen this way. Because of in, course. in youth, your worldview is beginning to open. Mm -hmm. So you're not at the point where all the nuance is there. It gets there faster than before. Mm -hmm. And I think these kids in Parkland are showing us a little bit of that. Absolutely. For the previous generations to see. But so did that of the Martin Luther King Jr. You he know was what in I his would late say, 20s though? at the time. It's always been the young people who have helped push us forward. Mm -hmm. And at the time, if you look at MLK and during that time, wasn't well received by a lot of people. History now shows right. that, oh my gosh, he has a day. And well, I mean, there revered. were mm -hmm. more than a million people that marched with him in the DC. I'm so saying MLK like in popular. his movement. Yes, but, but the thing, the, the thing that I was getting at okay. there with my passing comment, and I will give you to your show after that. <laughs> oh, we'll leave uh, Welcome minutes. to <laughs> Billy. This is Billy. This is one of our producers every morning. I, I think I think it's really important to understand that the technological influence mm -hmm. has changed 
every aspect of the social mm -hmm. interaction of the world. Absolutely. And so things like eye contact and body language and nuanced things, you're not going to pick up as fast if you're spending more time like developing this. those relationships through a device. Okay, and so I get just that. according to one article from USA Today, millennials earn 20% less than boomers did at the same stage in life. Mm -hmm. So, of course, inflation is one issue, but is that why we are saying millennials are not greedy but hungrier for more money? It's just a different mm -hmm. time. I, yeah. I, it's apples and oranges to me. You can't compare the two generations who was better. My, to the generation before mine, my parents were shoved out the door when they completed high school. Right, yeah, okay. 18, you're out. Uh, my, yeah. in, in my generation, we were strongly encouraged to go to college. In my generation? It was mandatory, but it mm -hmm. was there. And at the generation after us, the kids who are now in junior high are like, what university are you going to? And not only that, everyone else is now, it's, it's commonplace to go to a university. Yeah. So the idea of getting into a Cal State or a UC mm -hmm. is like, even if you're a 4.2 student who's the president, who's the cheer captain, who's the softball, it's you're still a not time good to get enough. In. But then mm -hmm. that plays into the idea that we just don't have the money, the access to the money that maybe other generations had because of the competition. Or counter to that, your parents were more financially stable than my generation's parents were. Okay, absolutely. And because of that, you have the luxury of not having to pick yourself up faster and get going faster. And was it a luxury? I think so. It allows us to Is be more creative, which has allowed us to create these innovative positions where you can travel the world and have your full-time job mm -hmm. and bring your the both best of both worlds together. But that then is seen the as but then seen by the world as selfish and, and that's okay because not everyone media. is going to agree with the way you choose to live your life. But mm -hmm. if we're creating opportunities for the next generation as a result of us being what some people see as selfish, what I see as self preserving and filling your own cup, then that's a good thing. I I concur wholeheartedly. Yeah. You should act in your own interest because we're gonna die off before you. <laughs> and our true. parents are gonna die off before yes. we will. And we carry so by it all means, the next. get yours, okay. but don't expect it to be given to you as easily. Can no, absolutely not. We have not. a I've really never, great we fan base right now on all the yeah, comments. Right. Somebody is saying Billy's the man, and everyone has liked the comment. Yeah, and everyone just likes that you're here, giving <laughs> yes. us another perspective. perspective. Yes, we tried so to really get good. Walt on too. Yes, uh, he ran perspective away. Perspective is uh, always a good. busy morning. Walt's got a little more of that yeah, get off my lawn type. He does. Bless his heart. We love. We love we Walt. Do. We love Billy too. Thank you, Billy, Thanks for your insight. Yeah, I saw him on the side and thought. Uh-oh. He wanted he to say something. something. To say. <laughs> Billy, don't just we stop. Had to, we had to remove the myth. Yeah. Oh, that's oh. right. That's Billy. That's producer Billy. He's here. All right, everyone. Uh, school debt, high living cost, high rent, where a one parent can't afford to be mm -hmm. the only one paying bills or rent. That's Maria V. Torres. I know. I don't. It's, Joshua it's not says easy for it's anyone. a never-ending circle, like we talked about. As millennials, we won't like what the next generation exactly. is like, it's which is very fun. true. It's like, okay, well, I don't like this generation. The next one, they're not going to like that following one. But you Although, better honestly, learn to. To, to understand it and, and adapt to, because adapt. our kids are going to be of that generation and we can't have that divisiveness that stigma between, yeah or like my generation was the best no it wasn't it wasn't the best and everyone has the best and the worst we have that youtube star what was his name that made the video in yes. japan logan Su paul suicide you have forest. your logan pauls of the world and then you have the kids from florida at opposite ends of the spectrum promoting social change and creating waves on social media to create division. That is in every single generation. It's mm -hmm. now just the exposure that this generation has to the masses because of digital content and social media that is making people more affected by what they do. That is what right. I feel. Right. Okay, we're gonna keep these comments coming. Not everyone is college material. Absolutely, Marie, Marie Knowles. I, That's uh, 100%. Any generation. There was another uh, article that came out saying that we need, what, what was the, um, what was the article the other day? Okay. We need, people who are more specific, not college and go get your oh, degree. Trades. Trades, trades. Yes. We need more <laughs> trades, men and women, more than ever before. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. like here, again, you need a specialty. Going, back, yes. going back to what we wanted before this whole combo. like explosion of, co of mm -hmm. going to college. It's like now everyone's going to college and getting their, their BA or their what BS. What makes you special now? You know, Bachelor mm -hmm. of Arts or, or Science. So now it's like, well, what makes you special? Yep. What is your niche? What is your expertise? And that's oh, yeah. especially in this industry. Everyone's like, okay, so you can be a reporter, you can be an anchor. What's are you focused on fashion? Are you sports? Right. Are you entertainment? Even within entertainment, are you movies? Are you television? It's like There's mm -hmm. so many different everyone wants you to be subjects. an expert in something uh -huh. at the tender age of 20. <laughs> it's right. like, I remember asking myself when we were like, go, going through college, I'm like, 
what am I an expert at? Like, I, I'm, I'm not an expert at anything. Of being a millennial? Yeah. Like, <laughs> what do you I know me really well. I know me really, really well. But here's the thing. I, I hope in seeing what's happening in Florida that a lot of the younger generation, this happens in any generation, there is a traumatic life event that happens, and as a result, people are moved to a specific action. I think with our current political climate, I'm hoping and I believe that younger generations will be more interested in politics and perhaps diversify the level of voices that we have in Congress and across all of our political platforms so that moving forward, those voices are heard at the trickle down level where, yes, if they're at Congress, then that means that changes are being affected in their hometowns. That's exciting to me. Mm -hmm. Yara Shahidi, she is a blackish star. So if Mm -hmm. you watch the show, it's a sitcom on ABC called Blackish. Um, And and she's just really, really popular right now amongst the younger generation, even of the generation before her, a couple generations before her. I mean, people are just loving. For her 18th birthday, which was a couple of weeks ago, if not Mm -hmm. last week, she decided to have a voting registration party because she has been so amped up about public policy and Mm -hmm. just about what's going on in, in our country. And she's so passionate about it. And that makes the younger generation want to do that. She's one example of young mm-hmm. people across the country who have a voice. You talk about the kids in Florida. Uh, you talk about all these young people because of social media. Yep. They now have platforms to now speak out and say, this is what we are doing. Mm-hmm. Come join us. Come yep. register to vote. Come join this party. Come do this. Post about you on voting day. Thanks to social media, we can see it now on a more public profile. I love it. Charlene is saying... Yes, to your comment about trades, more trades are needed. You can't fill the current jobs to get the housing needs met. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need you, Charlene, to break that down more of what you mean there. I know we are having a housing issue. We were talking about this before the show. Yeah. That there is such a bad housing issue that people are putting bids on houses that they have not even seen. Which makes sense because it's high demand. It's, you don't want to be paying oof. rent anymore. You want your money to go somewhere. So right. at least it's coming back to you. So is it better to come back to you even though you don't really know versus just putting it out there and then you're just wasting it on rent and things like that? I don't know. It scares me. Josh, so many topics. Joshua Willison, we can end on this. Love is power. If we just learn to love one another, even generationally speaking, mm-hmm. we will have a better world where we strive to understand each other and learn. And I think at the core of it, uh-huh. absolutely. I think the way in which... We posed the, the question, and the way it makes yeah. our generation, yes, seem so, as Walt put it, oh, my gosh, how shallow do you prefer love or money? Uh. We're talking about this financial services company called Comet that surveyed 364 single-employed millennials and just mm-hmm. asked, would you move for more money? Would you leave a relationship for more right. money? And money is just at the very top of the priority list of a lot of millennials. Again, right. selfish or self preservation and talking about what Joshua said if you would take his comment and put it outside of the digital sphere I would have thought he was a hippie coming from the era where peace and love reign and everyone needs to be kind <laughs> to it's everyone. a beautiful thing it's we a more beautiful of comment but we love is, love too <laughs> every generation loves love every, it's how we, we get love. there and what our priorities are at the different stages of life yes we so, love love Millennials love love you yes. talk to any of my friends I'm married you're married you would love to be in a relationship where, where a man you want to find was the right up person. to who you think your me. standards. Yeah. Yes. You want to find Trust the right me, person. Trust me, we're not trying to out here to be where he single. Is. We don't know where he is, but we can we be don't. picky. I say Amen. we because I'm in this situation. <laughs> we are helping you who pick. Are we, who are we dating this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> who are we dating? Oh my goodness uh, gracious. In my group of friends, we call it Dota. Date one, date all. Ooh. Like we all have to be Oh, that makes sense. Approved. Yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Well, like, I didn't approval. like this guy. Level. I yeah. love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My all mom's right. in that too. Or MoMA. Marry one, marry all. Yeah. I'm so Caesar. I like that. I like that. <laughs> everyone says that. Everyone says that. All right, everyone. Oh. Have a good day. It's 8:45, and remember to love. Yes. And go make that cheddar. Okay. <laughs>